unconventional fairy tales hello everyone and welcome back to unconventional fairy tales and today we're gonna talk about something pretty heavy but i think is necessary to talk about because everyone goes through it so let's talk about friendship breakups and how to make friends I don't have many friends right now. And to be honest, sometimes it feels like I have no friends, but I know I do. I just don't have like a best friend or like someone that I spend a lot of my time with, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm mostly by myself. I love being alone. I'm also an only child. So literally it's my whole life. Since I had a falling out with the person who I was best friends with, I'm not gonna go searching for like my next best friend, but it would be nice if I had that like person again. I don't know. I've never really had like a true girlhood experience and I really want to like want to have more of those. I had a few in elementary school, but I really wasn't allowed to go to anyone's house. If it was anywhere that I was going, it's usually like a birthday party. So it wasn't just the girls. And even in high school, I mean, I, I hate myself for this, but I literally would fucking lie to friends about where I was because I would keep hanging out with my ex. And I know we all have that fucking friend who leaves you for their boyfriend. It sucks, but I actually do have a friend who left my life, I guess, with her boyfriend, literally. And he's such a fucking loser, I'm being honest. Very insecure, very weird individual and basically just would not put in the effort to hang out with you and had nothing interesting i don't know like they just did not contribute anything interesting into like this girl being friends with another mutual friend sorry for the sudden setup change one time that they were hanging out together these mutual friends the girl with the boyfriend literally would have a full-blown conversation in front of this girl with her boyfriend that she lives with. Everything was referenced back to like her boyfriend. And I completely understand that. Like I'm fucking boring. Like all I do is like, oh my God, like my man does that. My man does this. My man. Like, oh, I hate myself too. Cause I can be like that. I'm so fucking good night. That shit is crazy. And like, she felt like she could never really hang out with her if it wasn't with him as well. The one time that they hung out without him, she just kept spending time on the phone with him. And that's really fucked up. Like, I don't understand how you can even do that to a friend. I don't know. Just very weird. But also, I think this is her very first, like, serious relationship. I don't know. But those always fucking... My god, my neighbors dropped something. Those always fucking fuck you up in the end. I'm not saying or, like, hoping that they break up, but... I hope he grows, like, as a person. And I hate that I... <laughs> I told you guys, I'm not just picking my nose because I'm f fucking doing blow. A whole booger just spat out of my nose. I'm sorry, wait, backtracking to what I was talking about before. I hate to be right sometimes, and this is one of them. And it's literally the fact that you most likely will not change if you stick around the same people. And if they're living together, and they've been together since like 2017. Oh, and then at one point, so her and I, first of all, her and I don't talk anymore. And from this mutual friend that we had years later, oh, actually, so the mutual friend was my best friend. Basically, one time they were hanging out together and I forgot what the fuck, like, they were doing exactly. But, like, when I was a stripper, I was just posting that shit everywhere on Snapchat. Like, mostly Snapchat. I really didn't post it on the gram because it was just, like, I don't know, it's Snapchat. Like, <laughs> I didn't even have like my shit public it was just to who i want like my my close friends like what it is now um so i thought i can have her on snapchat or like so i knew like fuck it i added everyone on snapchat it was like the shit okay since 2013 it was a shit it's the way i'm not fucking satisfied with my setup for me i lost my alex earl light <laughs> i'm not gonna show you my makeshift setup right now because it's kind of embarrassing wow I fixed it. Okay, this looks a lot better than what the fuck was going on before. All right, back to the story. They both had me on Snapchat. I, like, remember hearing that 
they were talking about me probably like the fact that I was admitting to being a stripper and just like not hiding it because I genuinely was just like this isn't even anything fucking crazy like it really I mean it was crazy and fun but it's so taboo it's literally not that serious I swear to fucking god like it's not and honestly I think just like being in that industry completely turned me off from every single man I meet yeah I'm not gonna get deeper into that but it's definitely a truth they were trying to kind of just like discuss something about me <laughs> which is fucking shady why do you want my phone my cat's going for my phone. I don't know, just weird behavior. And at one point, something between him and I happened or I don't fucking know what. Like, I have no idea what interaction happened that made her even think this. But basically, she was like talking about how, like, what if I was trying to get her man? And like, yo, both of us laughed. Like, me and my own like the girl I was best friends with, we laughed. We literally were like, no one fucking wants him. We've been saying he gave you an ultimatum. I don't want to talk about what it was, but like, girl, be for real. Mm. Ugh, just weird vibes from him. And yeah, I haven't really seen her in years. And it just, it just fucking sucks when that happens between you and a friend. I don't think that they know I know, <laughs> but yeah, not, not fucking cool. Like, I have never done anything like that to her. I don't, I've never done anything like that to anyone unless if it was like, yo, I gotta show you this like story or, you know, because I've been in situations where I'm like, whose boyfriend is that? That's someone's boyfriend. <laughs> okay, so regardless, I would never do anything shady like that weird just weird and not fucking cool so we're gonna get into today's topic oh my gosh i have an appointment tomorrow with a hairdresser and i think that's fucking like the first time i'm ever specifically waiting to go to a hairdresser well one time it, it was in brooklyn but like it was just for a haircut like i just wanted to trim but basically i want like I want my like bangs first of all i don't want these to be bangs anymore i kind of just wanted like a little fringe like that like just lands kind of like above the eyebrows oh my gosh it's not gonna look good right now and they're already fucking long anyway something around that length of like shortness or if it was less hair maybe even shorter i don't know i'm feeling fucking edgy okay i'm feeling fucking edgy i'm gonna show you the hair salon i'm going to it's called lock and shade in asbury park new jersey it's so fucking beautiful in asbury park like every time i go there in the summer it is definitely like it's such a music scene it's pretty fucking cool i went there in the summer randomly and like they were having the summer stages like outdoors we saw fucking t-pain <laughs> On a random Friday night when we were just going to, like, get pizza, get drunk, and, like, admire the full moon on the beach at night. Like, and we got a tea paint show. We got a fucking tea paint show. He's like, let me buy you a drink. This is the exact idea I'm going for. Ah, oh, fuck. Can we see it? You get the fucking point. I want like a fringe, but I also want like a little bit of color in it. Like I don't want to dye my whole hair, but I might do like a color block, which I feel like is not in style anymore, but I don't give a fuck. I tried to do it on myself once, came out horrible and it was my graduation, but I fucking made it red so that it could look really cool and also match my school colors. <laughs> Um, and the red was like dark. First of all, I tried to get it purple, but it ended up red and it looked really good regardless. You can't even fucking really tell, but I just want that. I almost regret cutting like a lot of my hair off, but also my hair is growing so fucking fast. Me and my mom got into an argument last week because she was like, don't cut your bangs basically because I loved my hairstyle before. This was not this size it was like longer it was literally just this and i hate that i kind of like loki look like coconut head or justin bieber from tw 2009 <laughs> she was getting so mad at me because i answered back like she was telling me not to do it and i was like it's my hair <laughs> and she got so fucking upset about that like how are you the fucking victim right now what the fuck 
But she like took shots at me. She said, fine, do whatever you want. Go make yourself look ugly. Like I was like, oh, girl. And I was like, oh my god you're such a bitch um and this is all going on in spanish but um but my response was not and then she was like no i'm not a bitch like trying to fucking justify her herself and all the shit she just said right now like (laughs) okay um and i cut them and i ended up like hating that i cut them like too much like i shouldn't have cut a lot of the bang whatever hair grows and I, it hasn't even been a full week. I cut it last Friday night and they are below my eyebrows again, below my fucking eyebrows. And I originally cut them to be above my eyebrows. And now I don't, I don't like this. Like it's about to start, actually, I do see it sometimes like in my eyes because it just feels like if you have long eyelashes or just like really curled eyelashes, you'd probably understand what I'm talking about. Or actually anyone who has eyelashes, if you just kind of like squint, you can see your eyelashes. Like those little like glares are your eyeglasses. (laughs) Your (laughs) eyelashes. Anyway, you can definitely fucking see it. And that's kind of what it feels like times a million when these start poking me in the fucking eye. (laughs) I was definitely like feeling safer about the fact that I fucked up the bangs a little bit. And oh my God. He wants me to lay down (laughs) so he can lay down on me. Yeah, no, you cuddle here. Yeah, I was just like kind of looking forward to tomorrow so I can get the haircut and I don't know, vamp up my style. Like I don't, I hate how this doesn't really have layers. Like I like the haircut, but I wanted this to also be layered as well. Um, And that didn't happen. (laughs) Whatever, but they gave me the best bangs ever. Can't be mad. He's getting so comfortable. Aw. He's purring so hard. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that with my hair and I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. It's in a couple hours. I'm gonna be a whole fucking new bitch in literally like a couple of hours. Okay, let's talk about friendship breakups. Finally, got my pen and paper. We're going through these. Fake friends episode. That's literally what I titled this. Oh, I wrote down how I'm feeling right now in that specific area of my life. I feel like I don't have a lot of friends and I'm trying to make them. Like I'm really going out of my way to make time to plant the seeds of friendship and watch them flourish, okay? Like I'm trying (laughs) and it's worked so far. I've met so many awesome like people just putting myself out there and like my people, like people that align with me, which is awesome. I kind of needed that at my age. Like I was tired of, you know, friends that self-sabotage and just like bring you down with them because I feel like a lot of the friends I had around me were in that energy field. (laughs) They were in that place but it takes a whole lot of fucking healing to do to get out of there but you almost have to admit that you're there. You have to admit that you're there. (laughs) Like it's happening. You're doing that. Okay. I'm feeling much better alone though not being in shit company. I fucking love that because I just feel like I've never felt more like myself. It kind of reminds me of what it was like to be when I was 12 years old. I'm not even kidding. Like just listening to music and playing, dude, playing on my Switch, picking up new hobbies, which by the way, I'm getting pretty fucking popular on Unsplash. It's crazy. I'm almost up to like 500,000 views and people are using my shit for free. BuzzFeed used it. I literally was like, oh, ow, I love that for me. It's so good. Like that definitely, this is, this is why I like hanging out alone. I realize shit like this and I like start putting myself in hobbies and just sports, like something, like something to have myself doing because I like to learn, but I don't have a strong capacity to read. And I try, I love reading, but Sometimes I just really can't. I have ADHD, but I literally... Oh my god, there's a little... Oh my god, I found a bump on my cat. (laughs) He actually liked me checking for that. 
Oh my gosh, I know you. And it put me in positions that I tried to put myself into a year ago, but I was just in a terrible place and just like needed to get a grip of that first, like what was keeping me in a terrible place and what just had me down. Like I, I couldn't do any of these things, but I was before. Um, and now I think I'm on a different kind of grind. Like I, I want to do photography. I want to do art. Like I want to do content creation. I want to paint. I want to do a lot of shit. I want to travel. I want to eat cool vegan food and literally live my best life. Like I love the van life. I want the van life. I'm going to have the fucking van life. Okay. I'm going to manifest it. You guys, why not? It's a fucking full moon tonight, actually. <laughs> oh, and I put the, oh my gosh, I put the affirmations that I made in the, like, in, like, a few episodes, I think, wait, oh my gosh, I'm getting my times, like, fucked up, <laughs> uh, my days, actually, um, regardless, I don't know, <laughs> I forgot what the fuck I was just talking about, but I'm not gonna end it to look back, oh, I remember, yeah, so point period, I feel better alone than when I did when I had those people around, and, like, I feel like a 12-year-old, I didn't really hang out with friends. I had like very strict parents growing up. I didn't really have like a lot of other people to kind of like be entertained with. And I kind of like, I always hated that. But at the same time, I never had a bad time because <laughs> I loved being alone and I still fucking do. I'm thriving right now. My mom's like on a vacation. My mom's in Dubai right now. I am in paradise, okay? I am going to revamp this fucking place okay when she's not here because <laughs> she is bad to the fucking bone like will not let go of shit like she is a fucking hoarder but she's getting better but i'm gonna help her out i'm gonna fucking reset this bitch i better not see it messed up or i'm gonna start bitching straight up i'm gonna bitch and ever since i moved out my mom is now my roommate like it doesn't feel like i live here in fact <laughs> i sleep on a couch <laughs> I'm totally fucking fine with that. Honestly, the it's like um it's like a futon couch. It's just like you kind of fold it and let it like lay with the seat. I don't know how to describe these. But yeah, my back only hurts like sometimes. I'm definitely wearing that couch out. Friends can be your biggest hater. Oh my god. Literally, I grew up around a lot of fucking haters and I never realized it until I really stepped away from these people. It was fucking crazy. I can't even describe it, but they, these friends would just like, I don't know, if you had something that you wanted to do that they thought was corny or you were even trying to do, they just like go, oh, you're gonna try blah, blah, blah now? What do you think? Like, you think you're, you're whatever? I'm like, that's fucking annoying. Bitch, hype me up. Don't do that. I'm sick of it and I've been sick of it and I got sick of it at one point. Like, yeah, wait, these people do not align with me anymore. And before I was never like that either. And I guess that's why I had so many, like, I feel like girls on my side, bitch ass, <laughs> fucking cat. Yeah, I felt like in high school, I was cool with like most of the girls. There were a few that just like are fucking bizarre and weird and straight up like took that shit to college toxic ass relationships and i feel like dude you're not gonna change until you fucking let go of the thing that keeps you like feeling like shit like you oh my gosh you cannot put aside the highs i mean the lows for the highs because it's like not worth it because it's not it's literally not and it's it was definitely hard to do but like, I'm just like relearning self-respect and self-worth. Like, it's crazy. And where I grew up, it's so fucking misogynistic. I promise, like, it's like this weird Hispanic mentality. Like, I feel like they're just like, oh, man of the house, like still. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> weird, weird. Oh my God, one time my like ex's dad would tell me that like, when I was like making a random food snack, like he would come in sometimes from work, see me cooking and then go, oh, I remember how it sounded in Spanish, but in English. Oh yeah, like, ah uh, yes, a woman's place. Oh, oh motherfucker. No way. That's just how it fucking is. And they don't want to unlearn that shit. Weird. 
oh my fucking one of my grandmas is fucking insane she still believes that women belong in the kitchen crazy oh bless her heart but like yo she is just such a dark person and it's because people refuse to change and she's stuck like i'm just healing the generational trauma <laughs> like, this shit is fucking insane <sighs> next topic feeling like a convenience friend to them oh my gosh i feel like i had a few friends like this i genuinely did i am very grateful that i've mostly had interactions with very generous people but like mm, it was kind of like annoying I was, like, used for fucking rides, just fucking stupid fucking shit. And I think, like, the worst part about, like, growing up is that you look back and, like, you fucking realize, like, wow, I tolerated that shit. What the fuck? <laughs> because, like, in hindsight, that shit's 2020. And you're gonna see, like, why you should have dumped them a long time ago. And these people will stay in the same place if they continue to be surrounded by the same fucking energy and you know what it's fucking happening like you're just growing up and seeing who the fuck isn't and that's it like that's literally growing pains but it's that's how friendships are i'm gonna talk about it as well but oh yeah yeah actually let me oh oh my god oh my god oh my god I wrote the stories down, actually. One of them just, like, you would always mooch off, not just me, but a lot of other fucking people in our, like, circle of friends. <laughs> yeah, we dropped her. And I am going to actually talk about these experiences. Point blank, she was sleeping with one of the girls, like, I don't know, like, situationship that she was in the middle of and would purposely cock block. And, like, he was hooking up with her behind this girl's back. Another two friends from that, like, group literally, like, caught that and were like, what the actual fuck? And confronted them about it. Not them. Actually, yeah, both of them. Because we're all supposed to be friends, right? Confronted the fucking both of them. Oh, my God. And we're like, you have to tell her. And you have, like, so-and-so tell her or I'm gonna tell her so-and-so before I tell her, and then I'm going to tell her. And you know what's crazy? She didn't know. She didn't find out. Are you joking? Fucked. Anyway, so when I found that out, I shared the story about how she did that to me two years back. And it was, like, so fucked up because she didn't tell me for a month. She, like, was in love with him. But she didn't tell me for a month. And the way I found out was literally the very next day after it happened with the guy that she, like, hooked up with that I was hooking up with. But we weren't dating. We, it's just, like, crazy. I, like, don't want to get into it. Yeah, just shitty. Just shitty. Shitty fucking behavior. Why would you do that? I would never fucking do anything like that to them either. I I would never do that to anyone. What the fuck? Like, don't be fucking weird. That's weird behavior. Okay. Not being able to confront your friends. I hate that a lot of the friends that are being dropped at this very moment is because of this. Sometimes I will be very, very honest, probably brutally honest or comes off strong. I only state like the truth. I only state like what the fuck the facts are, <laughs> my thoughts. And I'll call them out like if they're doing something that I think is out of line, you know, like, like I can't explain it, but they take it as a personal attack. And when people fucking take you coming to them about something is a personal attack, that's, like, not a good, like, friendship quality to have. I feel like there was always arguments between, like, this friend and I. But after we had a falling out, I definitely just kept her at an arm's length. And I'm not gonna lie, I feel, like, the relationship between us healing, which is so nice. But it's one of those things that you experience and then you realize maybe you are better growing together but apart and just, like, not be as close. I don't know just so hard and they come at you fucking crazy and that happens because it's triggering to hear something you don't want to hear or that you don't want to be true that just makes you feel like you're confronting the problem basically because it feels like shit you take it as a personal attack i've totally done that i've i've caught myself do that recently and i hate it 
and I'm going to talk about it with my therapist. That's there on that. And like, I've dropped friends because of the same reason. Like, whether it's them like not liking me or just like completely avoiding the subject, fucking weird and just like super avoidant, not fucking cool. It's really fucking annoying when you constantly hear <laughs> that there was so much shit going on for them. I know that they are just projecting something whether they know it or not we're gonna ha hang out like this we're hanging out like this romantic where the fuck did that list go okay sometimes i'll go to or participate in events that are like rituals for like the full moon or i don't know just something within that realm and you meet people who literally have the same interests as you so just like any sort of group that you are totally down to hang around and do something that you both like Okay, here's the portion where you reclaim your self-worth and self-respect. What and who do you put up with? I learned this actually from Madeline RG's podcast. If you are in bad company, you risk mirroring other people's values. I was like, perfect, perfect wording for that because that's exactly how I feel now or have been feeling because like I've dropped so many friends because they were just moochy or just like, like just really fucking not considerate of your time and your energy. <laughs> like it's crazy. But I fucking think that they felt like that was normal because we were surrounded by people who would do shit like that all the time and we would dismiss. But he was walking on eggshells already with the friendship. So it was kind of just like perfect. Here are questions really to like ask yourself. Do these people bring you down and write it off as a joke or you write it off it's like they're just like that. For the friends that I had, these are like I'm talking about the hater friends from the beginning of the podcast. Like just those people. I didn't want to put up with them anymore. I didn't want to tolerate that kind of behavior. Like I just want to like fucking I want to hype you. I want to hype my friends up. Like what? Why the fuck would I like do that? I don't know. Just fucking weird weird shit insecurities project in the weirdest fucking ways Ooh, do they do anything but celebrate your achievements yeah i definitely had friends like that like i don't know that would be like write it off as like what the f write it off as like something easy to do or just that type of vibe don't fucking say that if anything be like damn that's really hard or like you know kind of just like empathize with the fact that it is an achievement. They're like, oh, anyone can do that. Fucking do it. You won't. <laughs> like, you fucking won't. And if they do, okay, cool. But also, weird company. Do not keep hanging out with them. <laughs> like, what did they have to prove if they do do it? That it was easy? Like, oh my gosh, I need to stop picking at my shit. <gasps> they are fucking going out of their way to prove that it is easy. Like, why are you putting energy into that shit? Like, literally be like, oh my gosh, you make it look so easy. You know, don't be a fucking hater. They choose someone over you and only show up when they need you. That was actually one of the friends that I was just talking about that, like, got eaten up by her boyfriend. It was, like, basically couch surfing at my place. And I, like, had sleepovers with her every night. That was, like, the closest to girlhood I ever had, actually. And I really appreciate it. But it sucks that, like, this was a pattern that w me and the other girl were getting fucking tired of. Do they constantly bring others down or do they shit talk someone a lot? And they might not be doing it to you, but they're doing it to someone else. Who's the fucking say that if something happens to you that kind of just like activates or triggers this like shitty behavior to talk shit about you behind your back? Mm-mm. Seek healing. Like, no. These people fucking are the fakest motherfuckers. And they definitely probably talked a lot. I've had so many people talk shit about me. Like, the fucking Orange County people? Definitely. Oh my gosh, I hated them. They started excluding my man from shit because that's what they do when, like, someone essentially is, like, whistleblowing or something. <laughs> but, like, they do that. If there's, like, an issue with more, like, with more than one, I don't know. If there's just an issue, they'll just, like, exclude the person who ignited the issue. Which isn't even ignited, but it's just, like, fucking lit the flame. Like, called it out. But anyway, now they're realizing I was fucking right. He's a piece of shit and they're getting older and they're getting sick of it. Like, shit gets old. She gets fucking old. Yeah, so those people are definitely an example. I definitely used to shit talk a lot. And I like shit talking, honestly, because sometimes it's, it's fucking called for. It's debrief with my friend. But that's not something I want to do all the time. And in the last friendship that I just had the falling 
it wasn't even just that I had the falling out with, I was just genuinely like thinking that's all we did when we hung out. And I can't even count how many times we've hung out sober. Like maybe I can count them actually. Yeah, I can definitely count them on one hand. And it's crazy because we were high all the time for years. <laughs> and that is so fun, but like, I don't know. Let's do something else that's fun. <laughs> they weren't about it though, but the way our shit ended was just essentially her projecting something onto me that just like called for like, this needs to end now. We would talk shit about this one girl. And like I said, I told her to her face exactly what the fuck I was talking about. Because I'm like, I'm not fucking wrong, am I? Like, duh. And I'm being fucking honest with you. Like, you don't want to have a friend that's just a yes man. And you can tell the difference when they, like, are saying no. You know, like, you can tell that they're genuinely like, I don't think you should do that. I don't think you should run away with him. <laughs> I'm getting into the stories now. These are kind of spicy, so let's go. Okay, fake friends. I had a friend that I couldn't confront on serious issues. They would start cursing me the fuck out. And then the same person was dating one of my friends. And we had a falling out because I confronted them on something. Or I confronted them on being disrespectful to my friend who was confronting him. Yeah, and then he just started cursing me out. Like, what the fuck? He's a fucking, he's so fucking sick in the head. Like, literally needs to seek help. It's crazy. And I am not even exaggerating on that point. Like, I genuinely actually fucking mean it like he needs to be medicated immediately this shit is crazy crazy behavior and we only rekindled because he wanted to know if i knew more about shit you know oh just so evil what a fucking snake ass bitch literally such a fake motherfucker and it's so funny because we have a mutual friend actually i met his mutual friend and now that friend is ended up being my fucking boyfriend <laughs> and it's so crazy because at one point i was like oh my gosh should we invite him to the wedding if we ever do that man needs to stay so fucking far away from me i don't give a fuck ew those types of people are just going to put a fat evil eye onto your days and they were also one of the people who were just such haters like of everything so oh the way that like they rekindled and initiated that was because i we're gonna give him a fake name wes <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So my friend, you know, texted me that I think like this dad that she was babysitting for said that she can like crash there. There are times where like she genuinely just has to like do things for the child and they're gone by the early morning and like in this job. So she was like nannying for this guy. Apparently he was a hot dilf. <laughs> I trust. I think I trust. Like I believe that. And uh, sends me like the screenshot of like, you know, him suggesting that like oh my god and like but like i'm like oh my god bitch shut up <laughs> you're not and i literally was like what about wes <laughs> like as a joke like but what about wes <laughs> yeah they were like i know and i i basically wanted to say dump them but like i didn't because if it didn't happen by now it wasn't going to i feel like i've said it a few times so yeah they dated for a toxic fucking time like during the down Oh my gosh, just crazy long. That relationship was so fucking abusive. Like, very abusive. Like, emotionally, like, crazy shit. So, apparently, he hated when me and my friend would hang out. And apparently... Yeah, so he hated us hanging out and I literally just found out about that a few months ago. And that's another factor I'm actually going to touch on because it's, like, something that I think is serious, I would rather you be transparent that he doesn't like me. <laughs> because what the fuck? I still had his number. I still had him on social media. He just had me to keep tabs. Like, oh. I feel so stupid for letting him back in. I always say when I let people back into my life, shit goes wrong and I get proven why we should have stayed apart. So it is what it is. Like, it's fine, but shit happens and it sucks and it fucking, you feel so stupid and used but like you fucking get over it i like was super mad at first but then i just like got over it and i want my friends to be super transparent with me like why wouldn't you want me to know that that's crazy that's a crazy thing to leave out and this relationship ended years ago so like wait you all knew that the whole time and i just found out pretty fucking fake not gonna lie dude 
<laughs> no, tell me. That's crazy. What the fuck? That's just fucking weird. We didn't have a falling out yet. So keep in mind that this person also knew it was a stripper and they were like, oh my god, yeah, no, go get your bag. Like fucking right? But when my friend, first of all, they were in the scene for a minute and shit was getting rough with money. So they wanted to continue it again, but like they were, he was not on board, but he fucking slut shamed her for it. He was like, you want to be like one of those fucking sluts? Like I was like, if he thinks a camera girl is going to be a slut, I can only imagine what the fuck he's saying about me. Crazy shit. Also, I was fucking hooking up with everyone. Like, I was such a fucking slut. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Anne. You're mad. You're just mad that you get no bitches. <laughs> he would always ask me to bring my fucking friends, my girls and shit, because he's a fucking loser and can't really pull like that. <laughs> Gotta have someone bring it like a fucking pack of beer. Like, Oh my gosh. And I literally, I think I told him once, like, I wouldn't do my friends like that. And I think a huge thing to consider is that if you won't consider your homeboy, why the fuck are they your homeboy? Okay. Crazy. And whatever. We had a falling out. And my boyfriend, before we even fucking rekindled, they happened to tell me, like, you know, this is what I heard. Like, what they said. The way that this guy described our falling out was that he told my boyfriend that I got into a physical altercation with him when I never did. He did get into an, like, altercation that night with my other friend. And, like, it got physical. I think he, like, shoved her and she fell or something. But, like, they were both shoving each other. Like, first of all, why the fuck are you fu fucking shoving this girl? Uh, also, like, I don't know, just, like, not cool. Really bad vibes, right? And I had Lyme disease that fucking day, but I was taking day cold just so I can hang out for a retirement party for one of my um, old teachers, like, that we were really close to. Just catching up with old friends. And I went with my, like, friend who was dating him because we were both in that group in high school. We knew this man. Yeah, so he was mad, apparently, that I was hanging out with her, but then he got even more mad that I was coming to pick him up that night we were hanging out together and it was a long drive into brooklyn at night like what the fuck she's not your fucking uber <laughs> it was a different friend like i said but he proceeded to talk about it like so big and bad like whatever he was like yeah i don't do that physical shit like bro that was not me <laughs> i never fucking touched the man ever maybe a hug to say goodbye when we were i guess cool but like i've never fucking done anything and he also like to put this into perspective he was in the military came back and now suffers from a bunch of mental health issues a huge one is just like he has like memory problems and that's probably his memory of it which is insane because that like i don't know it's giving like fucking grandpa vibes like <laughs> like it's crazy um but some people just stay stuck in that type of shit i never did that but that's that's probably how they know it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, fuck it, whatever. So I'm like fucking 4'11". And my boyfriend was like, what? <laughs> I don't know, just so stupid. Like, <laughs> everyone's taller than me, I promise. It's crazy what mental illness can fucking do. I'm not even joking. Like, this is not me being just like an asshole. Leaving the military after being there for like, I think like five years. This is not fucking you do not come back okay all the time or a hundred percent okay it's fucking crazy and like i said my friends knew all about how much he didn't like me but never fucking ever explained that to me weird just like not fucking cool be transparent with me that's like all i look for in my friendships i can make a decision based off that like a very concise like thought through decision I don't really give a fuck. Oh, and then back to the old, like, the old friend that I was talking about that, like, slept with, like, other people's fucking mans. So, I had a friend that slept with a guy I was, I, <laughs> our mutual friend was having, <laughs> I don't know why I wrote I, slept with a guy, oh, oh, wait, I'm talking about a whole different boy. No, 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 same guy, oh my gosh. So, they hook up, he hooked up with the guy that I was hooking up with. And also very aware that I did not like to hook up with the same guys as my friends like no ew and i know it's happened sometimes i become friends like after it happens but like it's happened 
but I can promise you, like, these girls are not my friends anymore, and I'm not sure if all of them even fucking know, and I was always the fucking one to exit, because I just couldn't fucking bear it, like, I feel so guilty. I would tell them sometimes, and they'd just leave, and it's fine, but at least I gave you that honesty, you know, to make that decision, but also, this was when I was, like, a fucking teenager in high school. Like, it's just teenage shit. So, a month went by, and, like, this guy that I was hooking up with, like, our mutual hookup, confessed to me that it happened. Like, we were hanging out, and I felt like he was so awkward the whole time. I mean, he was always fucking awkward, <laughs> but, like, just, I can feel that there was something off about the vibes between us that day. He was, like, just randomly blurted it out, actually, that he did that. And I was like, what? Thanks. I appreciate the honesty. Like, I really do. And I literally said that shit. And yeah, it ended up becoming like something that was building resentment over time. Like, literally, I knew this, but I wanted to hear it from her first. Oh my gosh. And I would pretend I didn't know. And they didn't tell me about it. Nothing. In fact, I hung out with them to see if maybe like they would com like, you know, confess nothing but i could tell that they had a crush on this guy because they were just fucking talking about him and like how like basically everything about him and like i'm like wow this bitch is literally head ass over him i mean he can have she can have him it's fine like i was also freshly out of a breakup like i don't think that was even going to be like serious <laughs> i mean i don't know i'm a fucking asshole whatever regardless he told me he felt guilty. He felt like he was cheating on me. And I was like, you're not. Like, you're, no, you're not. Like, we, we both had breakups at the same time, basically. And we were so fucking depressed. And like, the thing is, I was also like freshly out of high school, I think. Like, I was like, maybe like 20. I just turned 20 or something. And whatever. I like, didn't hook up with a lot of people. Like, I had, I was kind of like, I had to like, trust that this is someone that I feel comfortable enough to do it because like I also went on dates after I broke up. I hooked up with this guy. He was such a good guy. Like genuinely exited my life very gracefully and I genuinely appreciate him so much. I never had like any animosity. Like he was genuinely just a really good guy and he um just knew that I was not over it but he always told me like you're you'll feel you're not gonna feel this I promise like later and he was right. That boy, that boy somehow slid his way into my life, <laughs> which is so funny because it was through DMs when they found, him and his friends found my friend's phone at Warped Tour, <laughs> like, in, like, 2013. Yeah, and then that's how it all started, and a Twitter DM, <laughs> which is crazy because, like, I feel like he always pursued me, and then the feeling became mutual, and he slowly stopped answering as quick like you know I can tell and he also was talking about how he was rekindling with a different girl that like he has a history with and just being very transparent with me it hurt I fucking cried but he was fucking right <laughs> he was fucking right I couldn't even hook up with him like it felt like wrong I can't explain it like this doesn't feel normal like who the fuck is this <laughs> hey I got a good ass fucking lesson from that. I really fucking did, and I'm so grateful that that- I'm literally so grateful for it, period. So, the same friend was a fucking cheap ass bitch and literally had so many fucking financial issues, like, was so bad with her money. Bad. And she was making a lot of money. Like, I feel like she was making a little bit more than me, and I'm like, how the fuck are you still broke, girl? Like, just crazy. She's so fucking addicted to whippets, like- <laughs> would mooch fucking whippets off the girl that she fucked over and didn't say anything about for years. And then when she would buy a can of whippets, which if you don't know what they look like, they look like a little, like, it's like a little tank. I hate when my cat looks at nothing, dude. What? You're scaring me. <laughs> okay, good. He started licking his ass. And like right before I exposed everything, she had a birthday dinner after this actually. We all had like a Snapchat group that we would all talk in. This is specifically for this like rave crew that would go like together all the time. Or still do actually. I just like, I'm just don't, go. I'm so out of the scene. Whippets are not cheap. They are expensive as fuck. Like bad stories, but me and friends would get like, I wouldn't get it because I really didn't do do it like super often because I just like didn't like how I felt after um and it was just too much like work if 
that makes sense. I know it's just inhaling, but to inhale a lot to like feel like that, um, I'm just like, um, I don't know, but it was a great ass time. I'm not gonna lie, but I only did it like, like hardcore, like two times. It was the best. It was the shit, <laughs> but don't do it. I am not encouraging you to do it. It's so bad for you. And it's, I guess it's addictive. I feel like so many of my friends like love that shit. <laughs> Crazy. I literally just did it. It's like, hmm, what the fuck's this? And then the vibes were right one night. <laughs> and there was a tank that wasn't finished from a previous party. Oh my God. And we finished it. Me and this, I totally sidetracked. Me and this girl and another girl in the chat were like, oh my gosh, we should go to ha Hawaii. This girl like was basically like shaming us for even thinking about that. They had a point obviously like with everything going on in Hawaii, but I didn't know that until they said that. I don't know, like, it was just so fucking... You couldn't have said it different. <laughs> I don't know, it just felt like an attack. And the one girl that she fucked over goes, yeah, sorry, I want to go. Like, does that make me a bad person? And the bitch answered back, LOL. This is the same girl that she has been fucking over. Didn't tell that she was sleeping with the guy that she was fucking crying over for years. Fake. Weird. From the rave group chat, she invited all of the guys out to her birthday dinner and none of us girls went and all the guys were like what the fuck and eventually i found out about that and like she introduced me to these people so like i was being asked you know how do i feel and i was like honestly like what the fuck like that is such a fucking shady move like i don't understand why they would do that like it, it wasn't that serious it was just a fucking like a thought like it didn't happen i've still never been to hawaii <laughs> what the fuck i think like her birthday dinner was on a friday and saturday i was going out for a friend's birthday with one of the girls in that like crew and she was telling me that our other mutual friend told her about what happened when she slept with my man essentially and bef between this timeline too she also slept with another girl's man Oh, she was sleeping with the bunch. What a bitch. What a dumb bitch. Anyway, I found out about that. I was like, wait, she did something similar? And then, like, I find out, like, she, yeah, she did it and she never said anything and that they were giving her chances to say something, but they didn't. And these bitches fucking begged me not to say anything? Are you kidding me? This girl's gonna keep having this bitch in her life until a different reason comes up? No. That's so fucked. I know if they were on her like shoes they would fucking want someone to tell you fake as fuck literally and i told this bitch <laughs> after that she left the snapchat group chat and one of the guys goes um why did she leave <laughs> and i was like because so and so fucked her over and i just told her about it she did something a long time ago and she just found out that could have deemed their friendship a long time ago you know as soon as i send that the bitch comes on. See a little memoji or bitmoji come up. I take a screenshot and then that bitch also left the group. No apology, nothing. What a fucking weird person. It was so fucking weird. Like instead of being a good person, they were just like, oh, I'm gonna unalive myself. Like girl, she was super medicated, but like also like doing a bunch of drugs and drinking. Like your medicine's not gonna work if you party hard like that. It's not gonna work. And even at what I was at, it, it had trouble working. Finally, just secret jealousy from friends. Things that I hate, like, basically. Like, secret jealousy from a few friends. Them not being straight up with me when they should be. And talking shit behind my back. And play the victim. I'm so sure. But I'm always going to be a villain in someone's story. Like, it's inevitable. I feel like I'm the villain in, like, their story, but... They're the villain of mine. Just like I have villains, like, they'll have villains. And it might not even be the correct mindset about that. But just, it goes to show just how fucking self-centered these people are. And yeah, because I confronted these people about how I was feeling about them. Just so evil. Evil shit. Tell them. Be honest. Be transparent with the people you're surrounding yourself with. Because, like how do you not give out the same exact energy you fucking would love for people to do? Like, 
treat you like a decent human being. Like, if you knew someone was cheating or... If you knew someone was doing all of this to you, you would want someone to tell you. A hundred percent. Like, don't fucking not. That's so fucked. Do better. And I guess, like, to end this here, <sighs> you basically just have to literally have self-believing prophecies and delusions. Like, literally as per Madeline RG. Straight up. Because, like, the amount of self-worth and respect that you feel you have you're going to attract that shit in the people you meet because you're just gonna tolerate those things and then just be like oh my god i always find shit people no <laughs> i know i'm worthy of being respected i know i'm worthing worthing <laughs> i'm worthy of receiving a lot of love and a lot of care i give the same fucking energy to myself that I give to other people and I love that and I know my past is not my present like I from all the trauma that I've gone through it's literally what you do after that happens that really like you know sets a tone for you if you're gonna blame everything on it to not do better then that's just the fucking problem that's it not even lying to yourself like oh but if you're like, you know what, I know this happened, but fuck it, let me, like, triumph through. Yeah, like, it's literally that type of mentality. I deserve peace. I am smart as fuck. I used to think I was stupid, actually. I really did. And it's funny when, like, Madeline, um, I love her fucking podcast. I'm like, I've been binging it, actually. I used to feel so dumb and, like, throughout all of school, actually, except for, like, first and second grade. But people would always tell me otherwise. But now I fucking get it. Like, now I get what they were talking about. I'm a fucking genius, okay? Maybe not with math. You just have to straight up believe in yourself and put yourself in a position to actually achieve these things. Even if you lie to yourself until you make it. Sometimes that works for me. And I don't think it's healthy in every scenario, but it has worked for me in a lot of shit. Like, content creating. Like, I no longer feel shy. Holding up a camera in public and doing what I'm doing. Also because I'm so fucking cute. Like, you see? Like, like you just have to own shit that you do. That's basically it. You just have to own it. And the confidence is what fucking, you know, makes them mad. Makes the haters mad. Literally. That's fucking it. This is a long episode and I want to thank you guys so much for listening. Um, I'm going to end this right fucking here because it is 9.38 p.m. I'm about to lose my Duolingo streak. I need to walk my dog and I have to be up so early to drive down the shore to get this haircut, like hair done. To be a different bitch, literally. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I will see you guys next week with another new episode and I hope you guys have a sexy rest of your day and drink water. I'm trying to. You should do.